All right, guys, I'm going to be interviewing Jake Paul on Thursday. That will come out on Friday's podcast. I'll get that up on YouTube on Thursday, about an hour from the interview. But what, do you, what should I ask him, guys? I mean, what do you guys want to do? I plan to basically have a conversation with him. Hey, Jake, what's going on? And, and we're going to go from there. But do you guys have questions? And if you do, write them down below. I will ask him. I've been in contact through text message. He's been very personable. I mean, I got to tell you, I think having a conversation with him is going to be very easy to do. And there is some direction I would like to go. I mean, look, what do we all want to know? What's the number one question? Obviously, who's next? That's obviously it. Dana spoke up and was, was very clear to say, I will not be loaning any more UFC fighters to Triller. The end. But good luck, and there's plenty of people that will go do it. They don't need me, but quit coming to me because you're not going to get me. Okay, fine. But that answers some of your questions on Connor. Kamara Usman was in talks as recently as a week ago. By talks, he was in the headlines. So who do you go to and in what direction? And I, I think that there's one direction that we can look at right now and shut the door on it, which is the boxing direction. To go look at, right, we got the Olympic trials this year. So whether guys make the Olympic team and come home and turn pro or guys come short of making the team and go right into the pro, we got a whole new crop coming through. And that's what I'm saying, shut the door and let them go do their own thing. Jake is doing something different. Jake's in many ways more special in all fairness. It is getting more attention. It's getting more headlines. He's being discussed more. I haven't discussed the Olympic boxing team once. I can't remember a day that's gone by where I haven't discussed Jake Paul. So who am I to throw stones at this guy? Oh, well, the, the real boxers and the true boxers. Well, who are they? Because I've heard a number of you say that. Well, he's not going after real boxers. He's not going after true boxers. Well, what are their names? That's the one part that, that, that you Paul haters always seem to leave out. You keep talking about Paul. You keep talking about what Paul's doing. You keep saying he's doing the wrong thing, but you don't offer a better suggestion in that direction. I only bring that to you because there is a level of notoriety and attention that is going to be required for a main event. That's just the truth. And I think the direction of the up-and-comers, as good as they could be, and as much as we'd love to see them get an opportunity, that's just kindness. That's just us trying to be kind and look like kind, sweet, caring, noble people. It isn't a reality. If you were a decision-maker, you would not do that. If you were a promoter or an executive, you were not going to submit that. And there's some roughnecks out there. One of the Pauls, and I think it was, I think it was Jake was talking. It might have been Logan, but he was talking about he sparred with all the Gronks. He said there's four Gronk brothers, which I did not know. I'm talking about the guy that plays for the Packineers, the Green, the Packineers out there with Brady, Gronk, Gronkowski, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I guess there's four of them, but Paul's in there fighting with them. That's interesting to me. I would love to see Gronk in a boxing ring. I find Gronk to be entertaining. I know what he could do on the grid on it. I thought he did pretty well in AEW myself. I really did. I really did. Little cheesy. I like a little cheesy. What's wrong with that? Guy's in shape. Guy likes to win. But there's other guys like that. And I think that that's the road that we need to go down. And if these are the marching orders and this is hard and fast stop, that it's not going to be a UFC guy. By the way, Jake and Jake owes. He owes Dylan Dennis. I mean, that match needs to happen. Now, Scott Coker might be saying the same thing. Scott Coker's now doing business with Showtime. Showtime might want to put that on. I mean, right, you see where this, this could become a little bit of a problem, but if we are looking for an MMA guy, I would submit for you Dylan Dennis. I think that's a very interesting name. I don't hate the idea of T-Wood. And there is something in boxing about size. It would seem to me that Floyd Mayweather could go through both Paul brothers in one night, obviously, and easily. But they asked Floyd about it, and he said no. So I will not take them both on in one night. Now, I realize the likelihood of that ever happened, but you see where that would make a level of more sense? I mean, to have any real interest in Logan versus Floyd, we have to have a level of belief that Logan can win. Well, you start talking about a handicap match or even a handicap evening. I realize it won't be two on one, but even an evening, that does get interesting. I mean, now you're talking about tournament format. It's very interesting. We're not going down that road. But what I share for you is more of the surprise of how quickly Floyd resisted it. And it wasn't from a business perspective. It was from a competitive perspective. 
did not want to put himself in that kind of an atmosphere. And one of the reasons that I was surprised is, first off, that seems like it'd still be a pretty easy night for Floyd. And secondly, that's what a sparring session looks like. When Floyd's getting ready for a world title fight, all the top guys, Pacquiao, Canelo, you guys are watching some of those training footage, you'll have four to five sparring partners. And every time the bell goes off, a new one comes in. So the guy that's out, the guy that's training, gets a fresh body on him to stack the deck. So in many ways, it would seem as though, even though it would never happen for the conversation and was for a headline, and Floyd, even in the headline, talked. I mean, Floyd doesn't talk in real life. I wouldn't think that in a mythical headline he would, but he did. He did. And that is the first sign and the first step we have in the direction of, can Logan beat Floyd? Floyd says no. Floyd says, both of them in one night, I got a problem. That surprised me. But that's the kind of things that it's going to need if we're ever going to get from A to Z with those two and get the most out of it. These are both guys who can draw. There's something about them together. Start telling the size story. Floyd should, should finish the thought as to why he won't fight them both in the same night. He should finish that thought. He should say, well, you know, do I fight the bigger one and then I fight the smaller one because the bigger one could really, you know, he could, he could cut my eye. What if I have to go in there with a swollen eye? Do I have to forfeit to this? And whatever the thought is, whatever made him say, I'm not going any further with this. I'll make it very clear right now. My answer is no. I mean, you would never do that in the media. Paul would never make that mistake. Paul is telling me he'll take on five guys. Ah, oh, gee, we can't find a commission to sanction it. Well, I was willing to do it. That's the way you play the media. Floyd said no. Floyd said no. It's the first thing we have in a direction of Floyd is taking this serious. Floyd has seen a little something different. For all of us fight fans and experts to sit out there and give you our opinion on who has the better skill, Ultimately, it does come down to the principles. If you ever meet a guy who doesn't believe, you know, you're picking this guy and you're telling people he's going to win, then you happen to run into him somewhere, you talk to him, he informs you that he doesn't believe he's going to win, you got to listen. You got to listen to that guy. Why, 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 why could you not win? What are you talking about? Well, you know, I don't like the way he's a southpaw and he's, he's pretty quick with that left. I have a hard time seeing that out of my eye. Whatever it is, but you got to listen to sometimes that's how you get your greatest insight. It's very important that people sound confident. Now, a lot of times it's an act, but it's very important because the opposite is saying you don't think you can do it. That doesn't help anybody. And in this particular case, one of the ingredients that we need is some kind of a belief as to why a guy who's barely done the sport before can get over on a guy who's never lost to doing the sport before. It's a tough one. It's a stretch. It's very hard to do. And our first step in that direction is Floyd refusing to fight them both in the same night. It's not much. It's all we got. It's the first step. And we haven't seen the Pauls get it wrong yet. So something tells me there is a plan. Something tells me there is an ace in the sleeve that's going to get played at some point. Let's see what it is.